Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. If you're looking for information on boas or other reptiles, chances are you're going to head to the internet, kind of like you're doing right now by watching this video. However, while the internet is certainly a great source of information, a lot of the information there on reptiles is incomplete or just plain wrong. And it's really important to consult books for more thorough and comprehensive information on a lot of topics. Today I want to go over seven really high quality, excellent references for information on boas and other reptiles. If you read and study some or all of these seven books, your boa keeping and breeding abilities are going to be really enhanced and you'll probably also enjoy your hobby quite a bit more. So be sure to check them out. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So if you want to learn all about these amazing animals, be sure to subscribe right now. If you're looking to purchase any of the books I'm going to discuss, there's a link in the video description below the video where you can go to order a copy. And as a disclaimer, I do receive a small commission for each book ordered through this link. However, this helps to defray the cost of producing these videos. I greatly appreciate your support so I can continue to provide you with these free BOA related videos. So now let's look at the seven books that are indispensable for BOA keepers. The obvious book to start with is The Complete Boa Constrictor by Vin Russo. And this is arguably the best boa book available right now. And this book is specifically related to the boa constrictor. They don't cover any other species. And so this is actually the first edition. Vin came out with a new edition last year. Uh, so you probably want to get the new edition. I'll say more about that in a minute. Um, but this book is quite comprehensive and it's actually arranged in two main sections. So the first half deals with husbandry of boa constrictors, um, anything from feeding and housing your boa to breeding your boa to diseases of your boa. And then the second half deals with the types of boas that are available. And this is where the book really excels because they start in the northern range of the boa constrictor in Mexico and then work their way down through Central and South America to uh, Argentina to the southern range of the boa constrictor and they describe the different localities as well as the different morphs that are available. And so it's got really beautiful pictures. Um, it's got pretty much all the different localities that are available. There's no other book that has so many localities that are described. And then it's got the different morphs by locality. Some morphs, for example, originated in uh, Panamanian boas. Others originated in Colombian boas. So it goes through the morphs in those sections. Uh, this version came out in 2007. So this one is a little obsolete as far as the morphs, since a lot of new morphs have become available since then. But the new edition is more complete and up to date as far as the available morphs. And so uh, an interesting situation happened because the first edition went out of print for a few years and it wasn't really available and so people were selling their used copies for many hundreds of dollars. I've seen them up four or five hundred dollars for this book, not sure if any actually sold. And so people are still selling the first edition for these very high prices even though the new edition is available and it's you know somewhere in the range of sixty dollars. So if you're just getting into BOAs you want to get the new edition. Okay, um, don't worry about information in the old edition because it's all in the new edition and the new edition is updated. So you want to get the new edition. Uh, I've, some people have asked me whether they should get the old edition if they're missing out on something because it's so expensive, but it's really more of a collector's item at this point. But as far as a single book, if you're just going to get one book, this would obviously be the place to start for information about all kinds of boas, well, constrictors that is. If you're new to boas and you want a book that's a little less expensive and more ba a little more basic than the complete boa constrictor, I would recommend the Boa Constrictor Manual by Philippe de vos -Julie. And in fact, you can pick this up used for very inexpensively. And so this book doesn't go into the same level of depth as the Complete Boa Constrictor, but it's got a lot of really useful husbandry information, as well as lots of nice pictures of different Boa Constrictors. It doesn't quite have the same comprehensive coverage of all the different localities, but it's got a lot of different types. And so one thing that's great about this particular book, it has a chapter on breeding boas that was written by Jeff Rooney, you know, the noted boa breeder. And what I really like about this is that the 
breeding uh, practices that Jeff Rooney outlines are quite a bit different from that outlined in uh, Vin Russo's book. So as I pointed out many, many times before, everyone breeds bows a little differently. There's no one size fits all. There's no right and wrong. So basically you just have to uh, develop your own breeding practices and style based on what works for you. And so having this book as well as uh, Vin Russo's book, it's really been helpful for me to read about the differing and same practices of these two really successful boa breeders. The next book is an absolute classic and arguably the most comprehensive book ever written on breeding boas and pythons, and it's The Reproductive Husbandry of Pythons and Boas by Ross and Marzek. So this particular book is pretty much the textbook of breeding boas and pythons in captivity, and it actually has basically two sections. The first section has chapters on different aspects of uh, boa breeding. So for example, getting animals ready to breed through cycling, you know, picking the breeding stock, introducing pairings, you know, diagnosing uh, gravid animals, as well as incubating python eggs and raising neonate boid. So, you know, very helpful, lots of very useful information. The second part of it goes through all the different species of pythons and boas, and they give specific information about each type. You can see lots of very beautiful pictures. This is actually the uh, part on boa constrictors, some red tails, and you know some Argentine boas there. So really, really useful book. The one downside is it's a little bit old. It's about 30 years old. Uh, there's no, it hasn't been updated, so you know, some of the information is a little obsolete. You know, a lot has advanced in the last 30 years in breeding uh, pythons and boas. However, the fundamental information is really, really good, and this is a very valuable book that I frequently refer to when I have a specific question. Because it's uh, out of print, you have to find it on the used book market, but it shouldn't be too hard for you to find. Uh, sometimes it's kind of high in price. You might want to look around, you know, uh, sometimes the prices of these used books goes up and down. Um, so shop around for a bargain, but you definitely want to pick up the reproductive husbandry of pythons and boas. My next selection is another out of print book, but definitely a masterpiece, and that's Snakes, the Keeper and the Kept by Carl Caulfield. So this book was written about 50 years ago, but it's so superbly well written. I've probably read it five or six times and I always enjoy rereading it. Um, Carl Caulfield was the curator of reptiles at the Staten Island Zoo. Um, you know, he has extensive experience with snakes, one of the preeminent snake keepers of the 20th century. And the book is good because it starts off with chapters on different types of snakes, including a chapter on boas, recounting the author's experience from his childhood all the way up to his professional experience as a zookeeper. And then the second half of the book has really well-written narratives of travels in the field in search of different reptiles. And it's so amazingly well written that when I'm reading it, I almost feel like I'm at the actual site in the you know, Chihuahuan Desert searching for rattlesnakes or in the Big Bend region looking for the uh, Transpecos rat snake. Just, you know, superbly well written book. Um, some of the information, of course, is going to be obsolete since it's about 50 years old. But there's still a lot of really great husbandry information in this book. In fact, there's a lot of things that you don't really hear about these days that were common back then that you know do still have some value. Here, you know, is the author with a boa constrictor and a clutch of or a litter of boa constrictors. A really great book. Um, just like the uh, reproductive husbandry of pythons and boas, you'll have to find this on the used market, and sometimes the prices can be quite steep. But shop around, be patient, and because the prices go up and down. Um, but you definitely want to pick up this book for the information as well as for the enjoyable reading. Snakes the Keeper and the Capt. My next highly recommended boa book is Giant Snakes by John C. Murphy and Tom Crutchfield. And this is the most recently published book on the list. This is only about a year or two old. Really, really great book. So the introduction goes through all the different types of boas and pythons that can be classified as giant snakes. Gives a lot of natural history information, really comprehensively written. Um, lots of nice photographs as well of the different types of boas and pythons. 
And then the second half has a lot of information about snakes in captivity, as well as human and snake interactions. You know, so Tom Crutchfeld, of course, is one of the grandfathers of herpeticulture, um, and, uh, and he's got lots of really interesting and uh, you know great experiences to relate about his time, you know, working with reptiles. Uh, so really great reading. Um, just a highly recommended book, not specific to boas, but a lot of great information about the giant snakes. This next book on my list is actually about pythons rather than boas, but I can't resist including it because it's the most beautifully illustrated book on snakes I've ever seen, and it's truly a masterpiece. And it's Pythons of the World, Part 1, Australia, by David and Tracy Barker. And so this particular book, whenever I'm looking for inspiration as far as boa photography or snake photography, I just flip open this book. It's just exquisitely beautifully illustrated. I, you probably can't see the photos from, you know, the camera there, um, but it's just gorgeous, gorgeous pictures, and it's got oodles and oodles of pictures of all the Australian pythons. Lots of close-ups, lots of, you know, shots of them in their natural habitat. All kinds of great ideas uh, for snake photography. And it's also really comprehensive as far as the descriptions of the different Australian pythons. You know, unfortunately, there's no boa book like this. There's no comprehensive book, book other than Vin Russo's book. But, you know, this particular book just has these gorgeous, gorgeous photographs. So this book is also out of print. And you should be able to locate a used copy on the secondhand book market. It might be kind of expensive, but again, shop around for a bargain. They're definitely picking up if you like snakes, especially if you're into the Australian pythons, like carpet pythons, green tree pythons, etc. Just can't beat the photographs in this beautiful book, Pythons of the World by Dave and Tracy Barker. Incidentally, they also came out with a few uh, other issues or other volumes in this Pythons of the World series, including Asian pythons and African pythons. I haven't seen those, but I would assume that they're also you know, spectacular quality masterpieces of Python biology. So check those out uh, by all means if you want a beautifully illustrated book. The last book on my list is Biology of the Boas and Pythons, edited by Robert Henderson and Robert Powell. And what this book is, is a collection of scientific papers on different aspects of boa and python biology. It's a really good volume. Um, bear in mind, this is they are scientifically written. So although you don't need a degree in biology, certainly not an advanced degree, to understand the information, it's also not written in layman's terms. So take that into, into account. Um, this particular volume has a lot of relevant information on boa constrictors. There are chapters written by Scott Boback on island boas, including Qualkey and Hog Island boas. There are chapters on anacondas. There's chapters on the Argentine boas. One really useful chapter is on the uh, Deering Estate boas that are a reproducing population of uh, introduced boas in South Florida. Um, what I really like about this book also are all the beautiful photographs. So just really top quality photographs of the different pythons and boas. Um, you can see. But just, you know, a beautiful volume. Something in here for pretty much everyone. And you don't have to read the whole volume. I haven't read the whole volume. You can, even if you just read a few papers, that can be really helpful and useful. So I would definitely check, I recommend that you check out this particular book. Um, so this book came out a few years ago. I actually picked it up really inexpensively. I think I paid around, you know, $20 or something for this book. And you would think that, a, you know, a book that's this thick and well written and, you know, well published would be a lot more. I'm not sure what it's going for now. But if you can get a copy of this book, I highly recommend you pick it up. I wanted to wrap up the video with some actual snakes since we've just been looking at books for most of it. And I thought I'd grab a couple that I haven't shown uh, on camera lately, if at all. And the first is this 2018 holdback Tarhumar Mountain Dwarf Boa Male. And this guy is just the pinkest uh, Tarhumar I've ever seen. So his mother is kind of a high pink animal. 
And this guy just has the pink, you know, kind of exploding. It's kind of insane how pink he is. He also has this beautiful, perfectly formed circle back pattern uh, down his spine. You know, really beautiful animal. This guy is now going on three years old. Uh, almost full grown, he's probably about three and a half feet or so, he might get a little bit bigger. But I would imagine this guy is going to be ready to breed uh, maybe next year or the next. Uh, we'll just have to see. But great dwarf boas, you can't beat these guys if you're looking for a pint sized boa constrictor that has all the behaviors of the larger uh, boa constrictors in a more manageable package. Moving from a pink boa to an orange boa, orange crush that is, this is an orange crush bloodline of uh, Bolivian boa, boa constrictor amaralli. And so you can see this guy, just how orange he looks. Just a really gorgeous animal. Uh, this particular animal is now going on five years old. You know, should be ready to breed pretty soon here. Um, what's great about these amaralli boas is they tend to be calmer and more responsive than other types of boas. Just a really chill boa. They love to come out and just kind of hang out. They don't like to escape, but they seem quite curious and inquisitive. You know, probably the most intelligent type of boa uh, that you can have in captivity. Just a great responsive pet animal. They're also really beautiful. This guy's got such gorgeous markings on his head. Uh, his eyes are just so gorgeous. The way that his head stripe goes through his eyes and uh, really cool animal. Um, medium size, you can see this guy is maybe, I don't know, four and a half, five feet long. Not a huge boa, not quite a dwarf, but you know, quite a manageable animal. So these guys are not available very often at all, but if you manage to find one, you know, you'll want to grab it because they're just a great boa to have the Orange Crush Bloodline Bolivian Amaralli boa. So that was some useful books. And again, I highly recommend you check those books out. There's a link below where you can go to order them. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me via social media. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.